Wow, welcome to another life-changing episode on our God of Wonders. Today we are talking about the Elijah ministry, repairing the broken altar of the Lord. The Elijah ministry, repairing the broken altar of the Lord. One of my favorite characters in the Bible, prophets, is Elijah. His persona just, I mean, it's very attractive to me. You know, I, I grew up in my faith, you know, studying the life of Elijah. He comes on the scene in, uh, 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 almost suddenly. There is no uh, introduction about his, where his, his family was. You know, we just thought Elijah comes on the scene, and when he comes on the scene, he's shutting down stuff. The Bible says this, that, and Elijah the Tishabite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord thy God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into this Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Wow. Listen, what an entrance. <laughs> what an entrance. But Elijah has an important ministry that I want to talk about. For a long time, I thought the Elijah ministry was really about calling down fire, that he was a revivalist. I just brought fire, the fire, I mean, he called fires from, hev from, from heaven, you know, and things happen. And so I was very attracted to that element of the Elijah ministry. But one time I was, I was hosting a friend of mine by the name of Tony Kemp. And Tony uh, and I began to talk about the Elijah ministry. And Tony Kemp began to talk to me about the heavenly experience he had when God took him to heaven. And in heaven, he, the Lord introduced him to Elijah. And Elijah makes a comment to Tony Kemp, that when Tony said it to me, it excited this program. You know, I began to study what I'm about to teach you today. Uh, he, he, Elijah told him, he says, Tony, mo most of my people on earth misunderstand my ministry. They think my ministry was about calling down fire from heaven. He says, but, what, but my ministry is not about calling down fire from heaven. He said, fire was the result of me repairing the broken altar of the Lord in Israel. God was responding to the altar that had been broken down, has now been repaired. And then the fire came as a result of that. He says the Elijah ministry is about repairing the broken altar of the Lord that has, been, that has broken down in your generation. When I heard that, I, I said, oh my God, I had that aha moment. And I began to study the same passage again, and I found it. That the whole thing about Mount Carmel, Elijah taking the false prophets to Mount Carmel, was really about the altar of the Lord. That when the, when the altar of the Lord in your life is broken down, the enemy can come in. Disease can come in. Failure can come in. Some of you, the reason why your prophecy has not even come to pass is because you don't spend enough time with God. The altar of the Lord in your life is broken down. You know, we, many of us spend more time at our job, you know, and by the time we, we come home, there is nothing left for God. We are so tired. We are so exhausted. So God is always getting the crumbs of our time. I mean, we are, we, we, most, of, most of us, what we call prayer is, is a joke. We are praying at, you know, we're praying before we go to sleep when, uh, when I mean, when the job has taken every ounce of energy. Five minutes into the prayer, we're already snoring because God is getting the crumbs of your time. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I believe that the anointing of Elijah is being released over the airwaves. And God's going to begin to talk to you about the altar of the Lord. How are you attending to the altar of the Lord? You see, altars are very important in the economy of God. Because God cannot just intervene in human affairs without coming through a consecrated altar a sacred place, a place where God can come. It's a place for God encounter, you know. And so God wants you to repair the altar of the Lord. You see, ancient Israel had allowed Baal worship to take over Israel. You see, Ahab, this weakling of a king, 
had married a woman, you know, by the name of Jezebel. And she brought the gods of the Sidonians into Israel. And soon enough, long enough, there were so many altars to Baal and, and the god Molech, where they were sacrificing children and all kinds of things, that they forgot that Israel was meant to be a nation for God and by God. So the altar of the Lord becomes unattended to. It becomes broken down. And Jezebel is killing all the prophets anyway. So the only people remaining, you know, in the land are, are the prophets of Baal. And they're not teaching people to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're teaching people, huh, the Israelites, how to worship the God of the Gentiles, the God of the Babylonians. And so Elijah is raised by God in that type of generation. And I believe just that the world we live in right now is crying out for men and women who are carrying the spirit of Elijah. Maybe I'm talking to you because you're supposed to answer the call of God for your country, for your region. You are, if you are tired of seeing the devil have his way in your country or in your region, maybe it's because God is challenging you to be the Elijah of your country, the Elijah of that region. To, to do what? Repair the altar of the Lord. So that as you repair the altar of the Lord, the fire of God will begin to come in your region. It will begin to come and things will begin to happen that have never happened before. But I believe that as God's people, we need to attend to the altar of the Lord. We need to spend quality time with God. Quality time with the Lord is needed in order for God to use us on the levels he would like us to use us on. But I'm telling you, if we do not spend the, the quality time with the Lord, we are going to fail to bring down the fire of God that can consume the iniquity in our lives, can consume the challenges of the people of our day. I don't know about you, but I want to carry the fire of Almighty God to my generation. And the only way to do that is to make sure that I attend to the altar of the Lord in my life and I don't allow it to be broken down. Trust me, there's been times when I allowed that to happen. And all of a sudden I began to see less healings were taking place. You know, less miracles were taking place. I said, God, what's going on? God said, you are not attending to the altar. The sanctified place. The place of meeting. You see, an altar in the old covenant was a place of meeting. It was a place of sacrifice. It was a place of God encounter. It was a place of exchange. And yet, without an altar, God cannot move with anybody. So the devil, being a copycat, realized if God is doing it, I'm going to do it. So Satan now begins to raise his own prophets with their own demonic altars to challenge God, to challenge the move of God in the region. I would believe God wants to raise you to walk in the fire of the Holy Spirit, to become the Elijah of your family, the Elijah of your nation, the Elijah of your country, the Elijah of your, of your region that you are in. I believe this particular broadcast, we're going to release the fire of God. I believe that God is going to release supernatural fire of God to burn down the prayerlessness, burn down the worldliness that is causing us not to spend the kind of time with God that can make us miracle, uh, make miracle workers of our generation. Because trust me, this world is in desperate need of the reality of God. It's in desperate need of the realities of the God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Boy, is he needed in our world today. But it can only come through the portals of men and women who have consecrated an altar that belongs exclusively to the Lord. And they attain to that altar. So God's grace, God's power could touch a generation. Listen, do not go anywhere. Do not change your channel. Because you want, this is one broadcast you want to finish with me. Because at the end, I'm going to release the file of the Holy Ghost on your life. I'll be right back. We'll be back with more of our program in a moment. Log on to FrancisMiles.com for his latest resources, including the books, The Battle of Altars, Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven, and The Order of Melchizedek. Enroll in his interactive Bible study to help you grow in your knowledge of God's Word in ways that make a difference in your life. 
Join Dr. Miles on his online church where you can enjoy an amazing assortment of archived video teachings. Just log on to FrancisMiles.com. And now, back to our program. Years back, I wrote a book to help you get delivered, get free from things that can hold you back from having a powerful encounter with the Lord. The book is called Breaking Generational Curses Under the Order of Melchizedek. It's a very powerful book that helps you deal with things in your bloodline that may make it difficult for you to have a very successful walk with Jesus, the Messiah. And so it's a very, very powerful book. You want to get that. Now, we have been talking in this broadcast about the Elijah ministry, repairing the broken altar of the Lord. So we, Elijah, uh, after he comes and he shuts down rain in Israel. By the way, we need men with that type of authority. See, they, see when you have an altar like Elijah had in his life, you can move, you can move nature. You can, you can move in realms of, of authority that can rescue nations. And that's why I believe that God is wanting to use this broadcast to anoint a lot of people around the world and give you a passion to carry this Elijah ministry for your region, for your family, you know, for your workplace. So Elijah shuts down rain and there's no rain in Israel for three and a half years, amazingly. He says, because he said, there'll be no rain according to my word. In the meantime, he finds himself by the brook Cherith where ravens are feeding him. Ravens are the most greedy birds. There is no bird more stingy than a raven. But yet when you're in the will of God and you're walking in the Elijah ministry, God shows us God can use the most unlikely people to provide for you. That's why I love to be in the will of God. It's an amazing phenomenon. And when we repair the altar of the Lord, provision is going to come to us even when other people are struggling to survive. That's the whole uh, power of having this Elijah ministry, that you are in a place where the altar of the Lord in your life is repaired and functioning well. It's truly a place of God encounter for you that God can find ways to provide for you, even using stingy people. That's amazing. Can you imagine a raven bringing breakfast and then bringing dinner? That's incredible. But Elijah come, is, it comes back into the nation of Israel in 1 Kings chapter 18, to challenge the prophets of Baal who served at Jezebel's stable. And so he says this, So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. And Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it. Then you shall call in the name of your God and I'll call in the name of the Lord. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Listen, the Elijah ministry, when you and I step into that Elijah ministry, hallelujah, we are going to begin to become what Dr. Morris Saluro calls proof producers. See, this generation is tired of mantras, just talking. This generation is crying to see the real supernatural to see the reality of God's miracle working power. That's why we broadcast our God of wonders. Because we know somebody out there is tired of the talk and they want to see the demonstration of God's power. Elijah tells, tells the people of Israel, if Baal is God, follow him. If the Lord is God, follow him. Why do you falter between two opinions? Notice the people were silent. Because they did not know any difference between, they had become so confused. They didn't know that the difference between the, the prophets of Baal, uh, the gods of, 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 um, of, of the Babylonians versus the God of Abraham. So he said, okay, let's do, let's do a supernatural act. We, we, we both create our altars. We put a bull on your altar. I put a bull on my altar. But no fire. 
The fire must, super, must, must, that, that must burn the sacrifice must be supernatural in nature. You have to appeal to your God because you claim they are supernatural. I will, I will appeal to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if the God wants us by fire, that God, let him be God. The people immediately responded and said, that is well spoken. I believe that this particular passage captures, captures the thinking and the, of this generation. This generation wants to see the God who answers by fire. But how can we give to this, to this generation the God who answers by fire if the, if the altar of the Lord that would cause God to make us miracle workers, proof producers, if that altar of the Lord in our own life is broken down, my friends, how can we produce the, the evidence of God's real power, miracle working power, if we have an, an, a, a spiritually anemic lifestyle with God, you know, with little prayer, you know, religious prayer just to make ourselves feel good, but not real encounter with God. How can we make the challenge that Elijah made to the people of Israel? But I'm glad he made it. The God who answers by far, let him be God. The God who answers by far, let him be God. I remember one time I was doing a crusade in the nation of South Africa. You know, and in this crusade, you know, as I'm, they, they brought a woman who was crippled, you know, in the, in the crusade. And I'm preaching, and, uh, and these people, I could see they were not responding. They were just kind of quiet. You know, and the Lord spoke to me, you know, that, 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 that they're not going to respond to you unless you work a miracle. They have heard so many people talk. These people are terrified of the witch doctors. They have seen the witch doctors perform the demonic supernatural. Show the part of the devil. You need to show my power if these people are going to become animated and believe the gospel. So I, me I remember the Lord challenged me, tell them, if you, if you pray for the crippled man, woman and she walks, will they believe the gospel? So I made a challenge to them. I said, if God heals the woman who's crippled in the crusade today, will you believe God? Will you believe the gospel? Man, all of a sudden, this is the first time in the night that the people came animated. They became animated. They said, yes, they began to shout. So I knew I could not continue to preach. So I went and I began to pray for this woman. And God was so gracious that in a couple of minutes, the woman began to run around. She began to walk and then began to run around uh, uh, the meeting. Began to run around the, 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 the meeting hall. People were screaming and shouting and more miracles began to happen. After that, after that, the following day, buses were coming with people. The way that spread, that God was alive and well in the crusade and he was healing people. Friends, I believe somebody out there is hungry for the Elijah ministry. Somebody out there has been praying for the fire of God to come upon your life. Friends, I believe this is your time. That's why at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to release a baptism of fire. God is going to baptize people in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because he wants you to carry this Elijah ministry. So uh, we find out that in this passage, Elijah uh, uh, the, uh, brings the people together. After the prophets of Baal have failed to bring fire, supernatural fire. They have been cutting themselves. Nothing is happening. But towards the end of the, to, towards the evening, what is interesting, Elijah uh, moved in at the, at the time of the evening sacrifice, which is the exact time that the Messiah would be crucified on the cross. Is that amazing? At the time of the evening sacrifice, the Bible says Elijah came and began to repair the altar of the Lord, which had been broken down. You know, and he took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And we repaired the broken altar of the Lord. And then he called on the name of the Lord. He, he said, God, I want them to know that you are still alive and well. That I've done this by your word. And the Bible says the fire of God came down from heaven. That what a sight to see. Can you imagine if that's a movie and you are watching it live? Those are amazing special effects. I don't think even Hollywood can even afford to imitate those type of special effects. Fire comes down from heaven in broad daylight and consumes the sacrifice and all the water. I mean, Elijah made sure that the, the fire that would come would be supernatural because he put so much water around the altar 
to prove that the fire that was going to come and lick the sacrifice and lick the water has to be supernatural because water can put out, put out a fire, natural fire, so to speak. But the fire came down. I believe that God wants to repair the broken altar in your life. I believe the spirit of conviction is coming upon you. And I believe the Holy Ghost is talking to you. You're not spending enough time with me. God wants you to himself. He wants to anoint you afresh. He wants to deliver you. He wants to touch you in a way you've never been touched before. But it's time for you to repair the broken altar of the Lord. It's time for you to tell the devil, move out of my way. I'm in business with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to see his supernatural power. I want to see him bring miracles in my region. You see, when you repair that broken altar of the Lord, there's going to be signs and wonders, financial miracles. We see the provision that was around Elijah was supernatural because he had an altar in his own life that was not broken down. He repaired one for the nation, but he had a personal altar that he was consecrated to God. You know, and out of that place of, of consecration, from that altar that he had personally, God used him to change a nation. I don't know who I'm talking to, but listen, I'm going to be praying for you. So don't go anywhere else because I really want to release the fire of the Spirit of God because it's going to become a baptism of fire in your life that will change you forever. Hallelujah. We will be back with more of our program in a moment. Dr. Francis Miles received a revelation from God that uncovers the way for you to issue divine restraining orders in the courts of heaven against Satan so you can begin to have your prayers answered every time without delay. Call now and get this brand new book and exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven by Dr. Francis Miles with Robert Henderson. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9664. Through Dr. Francis Miles' brand new book, and exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series. You will learn how to restrict and revoke the plans of the enemy. Discover how to use your spiritual authority to cancel the devil's attacks against you and your loved ones. Understand the power of restraining orders that are in the American court system and how divine restraining orders are far more powerful when issued in the courts of heaven. Discover how to use your legal right to issue divine restraining orders to stop the enemy from his lies, his theft, and his scheme to bring sickness, poverty, and chaos into your life. Understand how to defeat the Delilah spirit, which is used by Satan to interfere with the anointing and the source of your strength given to you by God. From the moment you get a restraining order, you are no longer responsible for protecting yourself. You have actually borrowed the entire judicial power of the court system and the government behind the court. You literally step out of the fight and it becomes between God your father and the devil because he's the judge who gave you the restraining order. The book and audio teaching series includes a powerful prayer of repentance plus 18 different anointed divine restraining order prayers for you to stop Satan in his tracks concerning premature death over your home against witchcraft, against the spirit of poverty. Don't miss out on getting this brand new book and exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven by Dr. Francis Miles with Robert Henderson. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9664. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9664 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Dr. Francis Miles loves to hear God's signs, wonders, and miracles in people's lives. No matter how big or how small, your story matters. If you would like to reach out and share your stories with Dr. Miles, go to FrancisMiles.com forward slash testify. Share your story today. Now, back to our program. Are you ready for the fire of the Holy Spirit? Because I'm ready. 
God is going to release fire into your life. The supernatural energy of the Holy Spirit is about to become your portion. God is going to revitalize your prayer life. You're going to begin to find yourself hungering for more of God like never before. Because the fire of God will bring a passion for God and to see the supernatural break out in your life and the life of your family members. Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, I come and declare and declare that a new fire is being released in the lives of the people that are watching this broadcast. I'm asking that the fire of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch people across the nations. That God, they will be radically transformed by this supernatural fire of the Holy Spirit that's touching them right now. In Jesus' name. I declare and declare, Father, that as the fire of God is being released, diseases are being burnt in the bodies. Those people that have got diseases are being healed by the fire because when the fire comes, it burns whatever the devil has planted in our bodies in Jesus' name. Cancer is being healed right now. There's a cancer, oh, cancer, a pancreatic cancer that's being healed right now, right now. Right now, God is healing somebody with a pancreatic cancer. Right now, you can see a fire just went into your belly. God is touching you by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I tell you, the God who answers by fire, let him be God in your life from today. Don't let nothing take away the fire of God that has just been released in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, I can't wait to see you on our next broadcast on our God of wonders. Hallelujah.